Planning food adventures can be a roller coaster, and we understand the ups and downs far too well. Our dedicated team works tirelessly to curate the culinary journeys you've come to cherish on our show. So imagine having the power of your very own adventure planning dream team all in the palm of your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Magic, your personal AI travel assistant and the sponsor of this video. Magic is your ultimate all-in-one travel sidekick. Need a swanky Miami hotel under $500? Boom, you got it. Dreaming of a three-day vegetarian excursion in Tokyo? Well, it wouldn't be my first choice, but Magic can do it. Are you considering Italy? Let Magic be your personal encyclopedia. And here's the best part. Magic is absolutely free. Magic simplifies hotel hunting, serving up options and reviews. Just use a prompt like five-star hotels in Nairobi with a gym and let it do the work for you. It will even summarize all the reviews and descriptions for the hotels you're considering to help you find the best option for you. But here's where the real magic unfolds. Once you've found your dream stay, Magic helps you craft your entire adventure. It tails everything to your style, budget, and cravings. From top-notch restaurants to transport options, and if you ever want to switch things up, just let Magic know. It's like having a seasoned travel pro at your fingertips. Say farewell to the travel planning headaches and hello to effortless adventures. For top-notch travel assistance, go to magictravel.ai and let Magic simplify your next journey. Now, onto the show. The most expensive thing you can get here at Hell's Kitchen is... In this video, I'll be dining at three of Gordon Ramsay's restaurants here in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. I will begin with one of Gordon Ramsay's most affordable restaurants. I'm just putting Gordon Ramsay's meat straight into my mouth. But after that, it gets real serious. We're going to one of his most mediumist restaurants. In the end, we'll go to one of Gordon Ramsay's most expensive restaurants here in Las Vegas, and I will be ordering the most expensive thing I can find on the menu. All that's coming soon, but let's back up a second. Walking around Las Vegas, you see Gordon Ramsay's face everywhere. At a certain point, it's actually somewhat disconcerting. I feel like he's following me. I think he might be watching me. Um, Gordon Ramsay, I would say, has a reputation for being a little bit forward, sometimes even mean. Look at yourself in the mirror and scream risotto ingredients. Risotto. Ingredients number one, what is it? Oil chef. Rice, you fucking pillar. But I believe all of that attitude is driven by this desire to be absolutely perfect in everything he does. But are Gordon Ramsay's restaurants perfect? We're about to find out. Let's move. We have come to our first destination right behind me, Gordon Ramsay Fish and Chips. Gordon Ramsay's Fish and Chips in Las Vegas is a delightful culinary haven for those seeking a taste of classic British comfort food. Expect a perfect marriage of flavors and textures in every bite. Looking at the menu here, they have a lot more than just fish and chips. They have fish, shrimp, lobster and shrimp, sausage, chicken. You can even get a fish witch. What's that? Let's go take a look inside. Iconic phone booth doors. Right here is the line. Ordering works like this. They have three different sections to the menu. The protein, the fries, and the sauce. You just pick what you want real quick and get out. Boom, we've got our order right here. I got two things. I couldn't just get the fish and chips when they have lobster and shrimp on the menu. So right here, we have the fish and chips. For the fries here, I have truffle Parmesan cheese, chives, and parsley. Over here, we have the lobster and shrimp. For the fries, we have bacon, bacon, cheddar cheese, green onions, and sour cream. The fish are $19.99, and the lobster is $21.99. Let's get into it. I don't want it to wait too long. They're gonna get bad. Oh, so I picked up one, and immediately they fell apart. It looks white, flaky, and delicious. I'm gonna hit that with nothing. I'm just putting Gordon Ramsay's meat straight into my mouth. Refreshing, delicious, super oily. It tastes like a funnel cake batter. I'm gonna hit it with that signature tartar sauce. Now here's a question for Gordon Ramsay. Does he try to keep it classic to show Americans what true Brits are eating or does he try to reinvent it and make it into something new? Let's find out. I gotta say, I'm impressed so far. You know, usually a fish and chips batter is gonna be really thick, but these are good. This has a lot of crunch to it, but it's kind of thin. Underneath right here, we have our truffle Parmesan fries. I'm gonna hit that with some of this sriracha aioli. It's like chili sauce and mayonnaise mixed together, but more fancy because, you know, Gordon Ramsay made it. What I'm curious about is how often does that man come here and quality check everything to make sure people are getting the proper experience. Gordon Ramsay has 58 restaurants, so that means he could really only spend one week a year at each one, but you know he's not even doing that because he's spending most of his time doing TV shows. Let's move on to our next course right here, the lobster and shrimp. That's a shrimp right there. It looks like a nice size shrimpy. I'm just gonna try the shrimp alone with no sauce. Oh yeah, that is full of flavor. Incredible seasoning in the batter. It almost tastes buttery once you burst to the inside. And a nice shell on there. It's got a really great crunch. This is super satisfying. They have the lobster tail right here, but they've kind of ripped the meat out. It's kind of like a lobster fish stick. I feel like if we were in Vietnam, people would eat the tail too. 
Um, I just learned a valuable lesson though. Just because you can do that doesn't mean you should. Right here is what I really care about. This is the meat. I'm gonna rip it a little bit. Oh, uh oh. No, I wanna put it back. Ignore that rip. I'm just gonna take a nice big bite. Here it's absolutely all about the batter, and I feel like each one has a little bit different batter and certainly different seasonings. This is the best. Overall, delicious. Do I have the same standards as Gordon Ramsay? No, they're even lower. They're much lower. There should be a reality show where Gordon Ramsay eats his own food and he thinks it's other people's food and then he shits on it. Then he finds out it's his own food and then he has like an existential crisis. I'd pay to see that. This is our first course in our first restaurant. Next up, we're going to our most medium price location, Gordon Ramsay's Pub. Let's do it. Folks, we've come to our second location behind me, Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill. I'm not even sure that we can shoot here because we're inside of a casino. We're in Caesar's Palace right now. You know what? We're just going to do it anyway, unless they call the police. Then... Looking at the menu, I'm struck by how few menu items there are. But I'm not surprised because I've watched just about every episode of Kitchen Nightmares. And in that show, what I learned is to teach people, you must scream at them. And that's how I deal with my own team. Look at them out there. Look at those tickets. I understand, Chef. Move yours! Another thing I learned on that show is that you should have a tight handful of things that you're really good at making. And that's what they have here. So here's my game plan. First of all, the scotch egg. He also has something that's definitely British, the shepherd's pie. I'm gonna order that. And then something that may not be 100% British, but I'm not sure. This is the short rib grilled cheese. It looks amazing. Let's try it out. All right, folks, we have it right here. Our first course, our appetizer, the scotch egg. But what is a scotch egg? And where's my scotch? A scotch egg is a classic British dish that consists of a boiled or soft-boiled egg wrapped in sausage meat, coated in breadcrumbs, and then deep fried or baked until golden brown. When you cut it in half, this is a result. It looks incredible, and they even put a little bit of bacon bits and perhaps chives on top. I believe this is my first authentic scotch egg. Let's go for it. Wow, that is unmistakably sausage meat, and it is soft boiled. The egg yolk is kind of runny, gooey, soft, and you've got that crunchy bacon on top. It's incredible. This is a dish that takes some legit skill to make because you have to start with soft boiling the egg. You can't overdo it, and then after that, you have to wrap it up. Here's our main course. Holy cow, that was crazy fast. It's maybe been 15 minutes since I ordered, and it's here already. All right, folks, we have our two main courses right here. Let's talk about them. First of all, short rib grilled cheese with white cheddar, sourdough pickled onions, steak sauce, and fries. Then there's a shepherd's pie, ground lamb, Guinness, root vegetables, mashed potatoes, chives, and creamy peas. This one is definitely classic British. Let's start with that. I gotta say, the presentation is beautiful. This looks like it's just mashed potatoes, but no, that is just the top. But I wanna dig down inside and see what we find. Oh, you can see immediately that lamb, even more peas, all that is coming to the surface right there. There's a nice bite. Try it out. Mmm, very lamby. This is just real, like, straight up comfort food. Hangover food. Mm, this is what warms you up after a long day of sheep farming. Chase it with a little bit of pea mash. Mmm, I know now. This is great food for people without teeth, whether they're babies or old people or hockey players. The mashed potatoes are super creamy and delicious. I really do like this overall. Would I pay $37 for this again? Maybe if actual Gordon Ramsay made it for me, then yes. Let's move on to our British food with a modern twist. These are my preferred chips compared to what we just had. In our first location, they are very starchy and thick. These, they've been hanging out for about five minutes, still crunchy. These are great, but I'm not here for the chips. I'm here for this. Oh my gosh, does it look good. Sourdough bread. Try it out. Mm. The only thing is I was hoping for a cheese pull. Maybe I waited too long or maybe I should take one more bite. No cheese pull, it's okay. I do think overall it is a good ratio of food ingredients here. The bread is strong and it holds everything in tightly. And then there's a nice balance between a load of this rib meat, which is super soft and succulent, Mm. Gordon Ramsay understands the American palate. Add cheese, make it into a sandwich. Are grilled cheeses common in Britain? By the way, let me know downstairs in the comments if I should go to London to review food there. That is three courses from Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill. But next, we're gonna go to Hell's Kitchen and see how much we can spend. Let's move. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at our third and final location behind me, Hell's Kitchen. You might remember Hell's Kitchen from the famous TV show that goes by the name of 
Hell's Kitchen, season five. Why didn't they call this one season five? Season six would sound good too. Hell's Kitchen in Las Vegas is located in Caesar's Palace. It's a dining experience that brings the excitement and drama of the popular television show to life. How? How is that possible? Gordon Ramsay is not here. Do the cooks yell at each other? Who is yelling at who? The menu features signature dishes inspired by chef Gordon Ramsay's innovative creations, such as the beef wellington and the famous sticky toffee pudding. Two items that are definitely in my crosshairs. Now, this is our most expensive restaurant we're going to today. I'm very curious what is gonna be the most expensive menu item, but we're gonna have to go inside to find out. Let's move. All right, in we go. I have my reservation and I have no permission. Let's see if Gordon Ramsay comes out to yell at me. Get out! Out, out, out! It's crazy busy in here, but I have a reservation, so I'm gonna be fine. We're gonna be seated in just a couple minutes. Let's go check out our seat. This place is massive. There's so many people. And look, open kitchen. Hey! So I've just opened up the food menu. They have some chilled seafood, few appetizers, soup and salad, and then entrees. I saw all the time in Hell's Kitchen people screwing up the risotto. Who cooked this? Disgusting. I'm gonna try the lobster risotto today for my appetizer, and hopefully it'll mess it up. Here for the main courses, we have beef wellington. This is the most British thing on here. I have to try it. The beef wellington is coming in at $72.95, but that is not the most expensive thing on the menu. The most expensive thing you can get here at Hell's Kitchen is the grilled Australian lamb. We got risotto, we have two big proteins. Let's go for it. All right, folks, we have our appetizer right here. This is the lobster risotto. But you may be wondering, what is risotto? Risotto is a popular Italian rice dish known for its creamy and rich texture. It's made using a special type of rice called arborio. And this, it looks and it smells amazing. Ah, oh, truffle. I'm gonna try just the rice at first. It's perfect. It tastes so good. I'm telling everybody right now. Waiter checking on me. Man, it is fantastic. You don't want it to be watery or mushy. You want it to be right in the middle and it just has a, a wonderful truffle -y flavor to it. I'm gonna get the rice underneath, the lobster tail on top. I mean, that is gorgeous. Wow, buttery, rich, and delicious. It pairs perfectly with that risotto. This is a, basically a perfect dish. I have nothing bad to say. It's expensive, but what do you expect? We're at Hell's Kitchen. I mean, you have to have reservations a week ahead if you're gonna eat here. And I'm eating here at 3 p.m. because that is the only time I can get a reservation here. That is just the beginning. We have a lot more food to go. So while I'm waiting for my main course, I'm gonna show you Hell's Kitchen right here. It looks just like the TV set. You've got two sides, red and blue. Now, the red side over here, they are preparing the appetizers, and the blue side over here, they're preparing the main courses. It's not actually a competition. The competition is don't lose your job. They're not competing against each other, but they've created the same vibe. It's fun to watch. It's a super cool idea. I'm looking at both crews here, I gotta say. The red bandana team is looking a lot better. I might be biased, but they're looking a lot better. All right, folks, here we go. The most expensive meal of the day and the most British thing we're having all day, the Beef Wellington. It sounds fancy. It sounds like it has good credit. Hello, Mr. Beef Wellington. Would you like a mortgage? How about a business loan? This is a classic British dish, which features a whole filet of beef, typically coated with mustard and wrapped in a puff pastry. British food to me seems to be meat, potatoes, and then sometimes they have bread too. They put all those together in one thing known as a Beef Wellington and this red wine demi-glaze. Mmm. It's like how Thor is a demigod. This is a demi glaze. Let's try it out. Mm. That's incredible. I believe the beef is medium rare. It's super tender and even texture. Not fatty, but still very soft. Then that puff pastry is like a little sticky, slightly doughy. And I expected that glaze to be a lot more sweet, but it's not. Hit it with a little bit of glaze. Cheers. Wow. The red wine glaze has a really deep, savory, almost smoky flavor to it. Then we have some root vegetables. I don't know how this works because if I'm being honest, I've never seen a carrot with balls. Are there different carrots I don't know about with balls? So essentially, this is vegetable testicles. Let's try it out. Mm -hmm. Carrot balls. A little bit of the smashed potato. Creamy, buttery, and a slight herbal taste in there too. So that is a Beef Wellington, an incredible experience. This costs $72.95, but this right here is the most expensive thing on the menu. Coming in at $84.95. This is grilled Australian lamb, sauteed spinach, romesco, and a harissa lamb jus. Oh, it looks nice and soft. This outer part is very fatty, but if you get a little bit more towards the core, you can see some real nice color on there. Is it worth $85? Let's find out. That is delicious. Tender, but it still has bite to it. It definitely has that lamby flavor. It tastes real good. 
fatty and satisfying. Somebody hid some spinach underneath just in case you want fiber. Here's my vegetable for the day. Even that's delicious. I gotta say, I am pretty blown away. These were both absolutely fantastic. The Beef Wellington was everything I hoped it would be and more. This has been an incredible journey, but it's not over yet. You see, Gordon Ramsay is famous for one dessert, and that is sticky toffee pudding. You can see this hot bottom layer right here. Oh my gosh, feel that back. That looks incredibly sticky and hot. And they have a melting scoop of ice cream on top. This whole thing looks incredible, decadent, sweet, and delicious. Incredible flavors. It tastes like pecan. It's just like this really satisfying sweetness. It's not overly sweet with cold ice cream. The temperature is combined in your mouth. The toffee coats your mouth with a sticky residue. Then the ice cream is just so refreshing. It's the perfect pairing. It's a $26 dessert. That's one of the most expensive desserts I've seen anywhere, which probably means I don't go to fancy enough restaurants. Actually, when I go to fancy restaurants, I just don't eat dessert. So that is our final course, and a fine course indeed. From here, I'm gonna go outside and tell you which was the winner of today's challenge. I know you're asking yourself, what, there was a challenge involved somehow? Yes, I'm gonna tell you which restaurant I think gave me the most bang for my buck. Let's go outside and sort it out. Boom, so those are three of Gordon Ramsay's many restaurants here in Las Vegas. My favorite today, Hell's Kitchen. It was awesome. Yes, it's expensive. It's a lot more than a normal restaurant, but this is not a normal experience. This is a place you go to when you want to try some fine dining, something you're not going to find at your average Applebee's. I got to say, the thing I liked most today among all the restaurants is that everything just felt open and inviting. And it's a great way for casual folks who are in Vegas drinking on the street. One second, they're yakking in an alleyway. The next second, they're eating Beef Wellington here at Hell's Kitchen. It's very approachable and accessible for everyday folks to come here and try out some astounding food. My favorite food of the day, the lobster risotto. Excellent. One of the best risottos I've ever had. And I've had like three. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Next time, I will review Guy Fieri's restaurants. All of them. I think he just has one. But all of them. If you love Indian food, then you're going to love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.